Coach Kim Mulkey. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Questions for the coach? Right here, second row. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV in Baton Rouge. I've heard you say in the past, uh, Flage has more joy in her heart than any player you've ever coached. If you can expound upon that. And second, if you can talk about her mother, Kia. She obviously got very emotional. Uh, Flage did up here yesterday talking about her mom. I could describe Flage in so many ways because I get to see her every day and coach her on her good days and her bad days. When I say, as you watch Flage play and you're just a casual fan that has no allegiance to LSU, you watch her and you go, wow, I just like watching her perform. An example of that, maybe the block shot yesterday. She, she giggled and grinned all the way down the floor. She was so proud at 5'9 that she could get up there and block a 6'7 young lady's shot. The joy in, in just, she was just like, wow, that, that, that's a memory for me. And uh, when you hear her talk, um, she just, she just is, um, she just has that joy about her. She has no agendas. Uh, she gets very little sleep. You know, that kid's probably up at five every, every morning writing stuff for her career and, and goes to class and comes to practice and um, works out, works out. Coach, one of, one of the great things about so many more eyes on women's basketball is people get to learn about some of the names that women pe women who are in basketball know about. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about Lisa Bluter and what she's done for this game and, you know, almost 900 wins in Iowa and everyone just talks about Caitlin. Well, coaches don't want the attention. It's all about our players, and that's probably the first thing she would tell you. You don't have those wins without players. Um, I'm not sure where all Lisa has coached in her career, but she's been at Iowa a long time. And um, we talk about growing the game. Look at their fan base. Um, you know, Lisa has, I just have much respect for what she does with her players. I think the sign of a great coach is you adapt and you adjust to the personnel. And while each coach has a different style, if you don't adjust and adapt to each team you have, and you become stagnant. And I think that the team she has and, and the things that they do to be successful tells you that she understands and, and knows the game. Uh, Andrea Adelson, ESPN. Kim, two questions just to put a pin on yesterday. The first one is whether you've heard from Corey Close after she issued her statement over retweeting the LA Times story that you mentioned yesterday. And the second one is whether you can use, this is about the game, whether you can use any part of your game plan from last year's championship game as you go ahead and game plan for tomorrow. I have not heard from Cor Corey Close. Now let me back up a little bit. Guys, I don't I don't know social media. I don't read newspaper articles unless somebody gives it to me. And I was actually in the bed sleeping with my grandson. And uh, my assistant said, sent this Corey Close apology. Um, I didn't even understand what that was about. So they had to explain that she retweeted something. Is that the right word? OK. Um, because. Of, I guess she retweeted that article. So that, I read it. Um, second part of your question. Whether you can use any part of your game plan from last season against Iowa as you game plan now. Well, each of us are a new team. We're not the same team we were last year, nor are they. But you certainly have some key pieces on each team. And um, our game plan will not even mention what we did last year. Uh, because we don't have the same personnel. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network in Louisiana. Kim, I, I guess kind of piggybacking off of that, what, what have been the biggest differences you've noticed between this year's Iowa team versus last year's Iowa team? 
Well, the biggest yeah. same is Kate and Clark. <laughs> That's the same. Um, the difference is, is the personnel. The difference is uh, those that were role players last year are now big players, uh, which that's what all coaches hope is that you you respect the process and when your time arrives, uh, you take advantage of it. Um, they're still going to shoot a lot of threes, um, but Caitlin Clark is a generational player, and it, she's not all about threes. She can pass the ball. She can take you off the dribble. Um, obviously, our focus will be on her, but not solely on her. Caitlin's going to do what she does. You're not going to stop her. You just hope that you can contain her a little bit and make sure that um, you do your job on the other four players. Hey, Coach. Claire Hanna with uh, TSN here in the front. Um, when Lisa was speaking last night, she said it's unfortunate that you're meeting this early in the tournament. What are your thoughts on the matchup in the Elite Eight, given that this was the matchup in the national final last year? This is not to take away from any other team remaining, but I understand her point. We talk about growing the game. Didn't that national championship game have the highest ratings ever in women's basketball? So I'm pro you're probably going to anticipate this one will too, but it needs to be at the final four. And that may be what she's talking about. I'm not going to speak for her, but man, this, this would be special if it was at the final four. Dan Sykeshewski, Outkick.com. Coach, first of all, happy Easter. Um, the LA Times updated their story and took out the line, dirty debutantes. I just wanted to know, um, did anyone reach out to you from that organization, offer an apology? And second, do you have any further comment? I'm going to answer like I did hers at, I don't know what time it is. Y'all have to forgive me. I am old generation. I just don't spend time reading stuff. Maybe an hour and a half ago, I had someone say, the LA Times updated, rewrote, did something, and they did it at 1020 last night or 10 something, and I said, okay, that was the extent of it. So I'm not sure what the rewrite was. I'm not sure if it was an apology. I'm not sure of any of that. But personally, no one has reached out to me, nor do I require that. I don't, I don't need all that. I just like to recognize when I feel something was done um, inappropriately to young people that I get to coach. Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV. You touched on it a little bit last night. Just the um, total team effort that it's going to require to win this game. You know, obviously, Anissa and Michaela knocking down jumpers, but the minutes that uh, Del Rosario gave you, what's it going to take in this one? Well, it's going to take all, all players that play. And, and I'm going to give you examples of that. We're not going to have to knock down jumpers to beat Iowa. We're going to have to play good. We're going to have to play hard. We're going to have to defend. We're going to have to get back in transition defense. We have to do a lot of little things <clears throat> to beat them. Haley Van Lith had a heck of a game yesterday, and people don't even realize it. Five assists, one turnover, three steals, took a big charge at the end, got her one and only rebound at the end. Those things matter when you're, when you're a point guard trying to control a game and hang on to a win. And she's got to keep doing that. She'll hit some jumpers. Um, Aaliyah, coming in when Angel got in foul trouble. She has the body to bang. I, I've been begging her to be a Mack truck and not a Kia. And she was a Mack truck yesterday. She got down in a stance. It was like she was loving that I'm, I'm getting to guard somebody that's my size. And um, she was big for us yesterday. Uh, all of them had to do something good yesterday. Not spectacular. You don't have to play out of your mind. Just everybody contribute. Kim, Nancy Armour from USA Today Sports. 
When you play a team again in close proximity, um, is it easier or harder to be the team that has lost? You're talking about for I'm speaking like for Iowa. I don't know how to answer that. I remember one year in the NCAA playoffs, we had played Texas A&M three times in conference. And we won all three of them. They matched us up again in, I think it was an Elite Eight in Dallas and Texas A&M won. Um, I don't know if it's if it's harder. I don't know if it's easier. Um, I can tell you that competitors kind of flush the past, maybe, and focus on the job at hand. And it might be a little motivating factor, you know, like if you lost the game to them before. But I can't imagine them being more motivated than my team. I just. I can't imagine that, but I think internally you try to find something that gives you an edge. Hold it, hold it. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, Kim, s since yesterday, I was wondering if, if either you've read the Washington Post story or had your lawyers read it, and uh, if you have any comment on what was in the story. I got it. I hadn't read that trash. I'm not going to read it. That's why I hired lawyers. The lawyers will review it, and when this season is over, they'll give me a call and say, this is our next step. I'm reading that stuff. What yeah. was, did I answer all of it? OK. Mitch Northam for the Baltimore Banner. Um, a lot of people like to point out sort of the differences between Caitlin and Angel. They're sort of the superstars of, of these two teams. I'm kind of wondering if you see any similarities between them, you know, in terms of like their competitive fire that they Heck play Heck yeah. With. Heck yeah, you see similarities. You've got two very uh, talented players that, that uh, have brought a lot of attention to our sport. They both trash talk. Uh, they both uh, make their teammates better. They both have their teammates back. Uh, they have elevated our game to where we have people watching that never watched women's basketball before. Um, yeah, those, those, are, those are tough women. Michael Cobble again. Just, um, I, I can't recall whether Lex or Kateri guarded Caitlin last year, but Angel said that Flage got that assignment last year. I was just curious. Mm -mm. Alexis Morris guarded her the majority of the time. Um, maybe when Poa, if I remember, took two charges off of her, Poa came in and guarded her. Um, so we'll probably have a combination of, it's your turn. <laughs> you go guard her. I guess just defensively the improvements that you guys have made in the last month and a half, does it give you confidence in big games? Yes, like yes, yes. We're, we're going to defend. We're going to defend. And you can be very good defensively, and she can still score on you. She's that good. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Mark Singulace from the Albany Times Union. You talked about Caitlin and Angel both liking to trash talk. Would you like to not see it kind of boil over like it did a little bit at the end of the championship game last year, or is that just part of the kind of competitive fire and all you know? I turn on ball games all the time. Didn't was it Luke and Donick the other day? Waved by to Vladi because he didn't draft him. You see that all the time. I, I I I don't even. One of the greatest memories I ever have as a former player. Won't ever forget it. 1984 Olympics. We're at the RCA Dome. The men's team and the women's team, coached by Bob Knight and Pat Summit. We're going to get to play against pros. I had front row seats watching Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Bill Walton, the list goes on, play against our 84 Olympic team, which was Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing. You can go get the list. I was in heaven. The crap that came out of those guys' mouths, I couldn't quit watching. It's sports. It's sports. 
I mean, have you ever thought watching games in the NCAA playoffs how much you could write about a lot of players and the stuff that's come out of their mouths, not just Angel and not just Clark? Anybody else know what I'm talking about? You can do whatever you want if you choose to focus on that. Um, I don't choose to focus on that because um, you see it all the time. If you turn on and watch pro games, um, I, I just, I was a trash talker. I mean, uh, thank God I didn't have all of y'all following me. In fact, cameras and everything else. I mean, you, you're out there, you're trying to get after it. Don't, don't make more out of that than, than has already been written. Last one, go ahead. Reed Darcy at the Advocate and Baton Rouge. Coach, I'm curious, what have you seen from Iowa's role players? Where do they excel and how do you think you can? Uh, the three ball. Players? You better guard the three ball. Um, and they play their roles extremely well. Uh, you know, they have such a connection with Clark that when you think you have the three ball covered or the denial, they'll backdoor you. Um, they're going to run. When you look at Iowa, um, you may not think they get a lot of transition baskets, but they do. Um, yes, they're a three ball shooting team, but they do other things. Um, they're good. They're just good. And we're going to have to play extremely, extremely well. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for All your right. time this mm -hmm. morning. Welcome, student athletes. We have Flaw J. Johnson, Angel Reese, and Haley Van Lith. And we'll open it up to questions. Front row. Pat Eaton, Rob, from the Associated Press. Angel, you know this is coming from an old guy, but um, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson played each other in the national championship game, and then the rest of their careers were kind of linked by the matchup between the two. Um, I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about your relationship with Caitlin and um, how that might define you guys. Um, one, I'm a little too young to have seen them. Um, uh, so yeah, let's start there. Um, so people do compare that matchup all the time, but I've never seen the matchup, so I'm not really familiar with it. Um, I've been playing Caitlin since we were in high school. I played her. Um, in my AAU championship when she played for all Iowa Tech, uh, played her at Maryland, and then of course played her here at LSU. Um, just a super competitive uh, relationship, being able to play against each other, and then last year the national championship, being able to just grow women's basketball and just being able to help the game is just something that we've just had, and there's no any, anything else than that. Hold on one sec. Okay, we'll start over here. Front row, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Mark Singulace from the Albany Times Union. Question for Angel and Haley. Uh, your coach was just up here saying that it's kind of unfortunate that this game is a regional final. It might be for better for the game if you were playing in the you know, final four. I wonder if I could get your th either of your thoughts on that. Um, I mean, it's just a g another game to help grow women's basketball. It's going to be unfortunate, of course, to play them just in the regionals, but of course, it, it, we're just help, happy to be a part of it. Um, we're happy where we are right now. We really can't complain about it. So I know a lot of people are going to watch the game. Um, and then the next round, more people are going to watch that game. So just keep bringing attention to the game. So I wouldn't complain about it. Hey, like? Yeah. I mean, I don't really think uh, it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, we were, we were going to have to play each other at some point. So um, maybe it is a little early for some people's liking. But um, there, that's nothing that you can control. Hey, Angel, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. I don't know how much time you've had to watch film necessarily, but I was just curious, looking at sort of the <coughs> post-player differences, one big thing for Iowa, what does Hannah Stolke present that maybe Monica didn't present last year? What are sort of the similarities or differences there, and how does she change this game? Yeah, I really like Hannah's game. She's a strong po post-player. She's more versatile than Susano, um, so I know I'm going to have to guard her much higher than I had to guard Susano last year. Um, Susano was very, very efficient around the basket um, as well, and Hannah is, Hannah is too, but I'm going to have to guard her more out of the paint this, this game. So she also rebounds. She rebounds really, really well. Um, I think our advantage is going to be at that four spot. Anissa is going to do a great job, and then Aaliyah being able to come in too. So we have, we have, a, we have some depth this 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 year being able to do that Reed Darcy with the advocate in Baton Rouge uh, Flage this one's for you um, 
guarding Caitlin Clark and are going to spend some time on her, I assume. Um, what does that mean to you, and how do you think you go about doing that? Um, <clears throat> I think it's just like she's just a great player. Um, last year, I got a switch on her early in the game, and I was like, she's not going to pull that for real. And then she pulled it for real from like half court, and she made it, and I was like, whoa. So kind of had them, you know, spurs of moments being, getting in switches with her. So it'll be a, um, a, a good, you know, display for me. It's just like I want to compete at the highest level. And right now, Caitlin is the highest level, so I can defend her, try to contain her and get the win. We'll be fine. There's no stopping her, but containing her, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take on that challenge. <clears throat> Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Haley, when can, last year the championship game, where were you, where were you watching uh, the game from and what were your impressions of it? Yeah, I, I was actually watching the game back at my place at my old school. Um, and I just remember just the excitement of the game and the emotions that you could see through the TV. Um, and you just felt like, it was a huge moment for women's basketball, and I felt like a weird, like drawing to like how emotional the game was, and I felt like I really related to that, and that's how I played, and stuff. So I remember exactly where I was when I watched it. Chessa Boucher with NBC 33. Haley, last night's ball game, you didn't have a ton of points, but you did a lot on the stat sheet. Coach Mulkey talked about your contribution. How has it been for you? in this tournament, and even though you might not be getting the points that you're accustomed to, but you've contributed to this team? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I'm just trying to make winning plays. And I think in the fourth quarter, I was able to come up with some winning plays for us. Um, and, you know, I would rather be known as a winner than a scorer. Um, because at the end of the day, if all you're going to ask me to do is score, like that's something that I can definitely do. So, um, yeah, I think at this point it's about making winning plays. Thanks. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. This is for any one of you. When you play a team uh, uh, in a rematch in pretty close proximity like you guys are going to have tomorrow, is it easier to be the team that has won the first game or the team that has lost the first game? Um, obviously, the team that has won the first game, um, the scouting report going into the game last year is, is the same scouting report going into the game this year. Caitlin Clark is who she is, um, and we're going to have to guard, contain her as best as we can. She's an amazing player. So, of course, last year, um, the scouting report was just to contain her as best as we can and not let the surrounding players score as much as they, as, as they could. So we're going to do the same thing again this year. I mean, she's, she's scoring 30 when they win. She's scoring 30 when they lose. So it's a win-win-lose situation with, the, with, the, with this. So we're just going to have to not allow those other players to score. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, Kim was just up here and said that we make too much of the trash talk. Both of you were at the circle of that center of that circle last year. And now that a year later, how do you uh, how do you view it? Is it just something for y'all on the on the court, and and everybody else should just let it be what it is? Yeah, I mean it's part of the game, and it's a part of why people want to watch the game. I think when you think about hockey and the fights, like people like to see that, um, and that's not why we do it. It's, it's our personalities, it's, it's what makes the game fun for us. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, pe people make assumptions and they don't really know the back, they don't really know what we're saying and they don't really know the backstory or anything yeah. leading up to it. And that's nothing that we can control. And at the end of the day, if that's what people want to complain and talk about, <clears throat> it is what it is, but that doesn't mean we're gonna change. And I think enough people enjoy it, obviously, because women's basketball is doing better than it's ever done. Um, so you can choose to focus on the people that say bad things about it, but at the end of the day, like, they're talking online for a reason. Like, if they were in this situation, they would never be in that situation to begin with because they're too busy commenting on other people's lives, so. It's facts. <laughs> for me, um, I don't think people realize, like, it's not personal. Like, once we get out between those lines, like, I, if I see you walking down the street, like it's hey girl, like what's up? Let's 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 hang out. Like, I think people just take it like we hate each other. Like me and Caitlin Clark don't hate each other. <laughs> like I want everybody to understand that. 
it's just a super competitive game and like I would just wish people re realized that like once I get between those lines it's no friends I have plenty of friends on the court that I talk to outside of the game but like when I get between those lines like we're not we're not friends we're not buddies I'm gonna talk trash to you I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get in your head the whole entire game but after the game we can kick it like I don't think people really realize that and that's fine. Um, I, I'll take the I'll take the villain role. I'll take the the hit for it. But I know we're going women's basketball, and if this is the way we're going to do it, then this is the way we're going to do it. You like it or you don't. Cassandra Negley with Yahoo Sports. Haley, you had said you felt drawn watching LSU in the title game. How much did that title game and watching it impact your decision to join them? Um, I think I had watched LSU before. Um, and just the excitement that the bench had, the coaches had, the players had playing with each other. Um, I don't know if the, if the title game was a huge – it was more just the energy that I could feel through the screen and um, the energy of the games that I had seen before. Um, yeah, I mean, it made me – like, I was like, I want to play on that team. And so, um, obviously, what I, the emotions I felt – in that moment definitely played a part in who I chose to reach out to when I was in the portal. Dan Zekchewski, Outkick.com. Uh, Angel, you talk about the trash talk. I I'm wondering, do you use it at all as part of your strategy to try and get opponents off of their game? Is that, <laughs> does that go into it? Um, I think it honestly just gets me going. Um, it's where I'm from. I'm from Baltimore, so that's just kind of what we do. Um, I like to get things going, especially if I'm having a rougher game and I get a basket, I'm like, I'm trying to hype myself up and get myself, get myself going. It's not, like I said, it's not personal to the other player on the, on the other team, but it is what it is. I mean, you take it how you want. Uh, Doug Feinberg, DAP. Angel and Haley, regardless if you decide to come back or not for another year, you left the game in a better spot than it was nationally, not just LSU winning a title of City last year than it was before you came in and started playing. Is that something you think is important for your legacy is that, hey, women's basketball has been lifted because of what you guys have done on and off the court? Yeah, I always wanted to leave my impact. Um, just being able to have people say that she, she changed my life. She's gave me inspiration. She's gave me confidence. And I think I've done that in so many different ways. And being a great player is, is, is amazing. But being able to have little girls or even grown women come up to me and it's like, thank you. Like, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for speaking out on things that I'm too scared to speak out on or I don't have the platform to use. So just being able to be that person, I mean, if basketball was to end for me today, I would know my impact that I've left on so many different people. Yeah, I agree. Um, when it goes back to the, the younger generation, and I just remember – being a kid growing up and there was never any women's basketball games on TV um, you didn't really hear about the WNBA like I, I was looking up to men's players like I wanted to be Kyrie and I wanted to be Steph like I wasn't like I want to be Sue Bird there just wasn't any coverage um, and I think today young girls can see themselves in other female athletes um, we're there on TV um, we're in their face and they can relate to us and so I think that that's really special. And um, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. So thank you, student athletes. And thank, thank you. you, media, for the thank time. You.